But as we go to the word of God on this morning, we have a, a word that the Holy Spirit has, has given me. And I just believe that it will be a blessing to someone's heart on today. Go to the book of Habakkuk. Amen. The second chapter of the Minor Prophets. Amen. We're going to uh, be starting at the first of verse. We'll be reading to verse 3. When you find Habakkuk, second chapter, verses 1 through 3. Amen. Out of reverence of the Holy Word, we ask that you stand. Amen. Habakkuk 2, 1 through 3. We'll be reading out of the King James Version on this morning. The Word of God for the people of God. We just follow says, I will stand watch upon, I will stand upon my watch, that the Lord has set me upon the tower, and will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, somebody said write the vision, hmm. and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Somebody say for an appointed time. Not your time, but an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry. Mm -mm, I got any people that don't mind waiting just a little bit. It says, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Praise the Lord. On this morning, amen, for the time that we have together, I want to preach from the subject when vision gives pain a purpose. When vision, vision gives pain a purpose. The word vision, amen, if you look it up, it will be described as sight, dream, or enlightenment. Vision is the power of anticipation, expectation. Vision makes the unseen visible and the unknown possible. Spiritual definition of vision, spiritual in nature, it is defined as God's given insight or revelation into the direction and the purpose for your life, which means that God has opened up your spiritual eyes to see what is going to happen, not now, but in the future. Uh, this is illustrated, amen, a biblical in illustration uh, in the concluding chapters of the book of Ezekiel. In the 40th chapter, you will find where the prophet Ezekiel is transported in a vision from his home among uh, the exiles in Babylon to Israel, where he receives a divine vision and an angelic tour of a temple. Spiritually speaking on today, when you talk about vision, you are looking at your life from God's perspective. Colossians 3 and 2 puts it like this, your mind is, is not on earthly things. You are focused in on spiritual and on on things that are above. And, and so in Proverbs 29 and 18, we're all familiar uh, with this passage. Uh, you understand why the word of God, it says that without a vision, people perish. This is so true on this morning. All you have to do is turn on the news. Amen. Listen to Facebook Live. Amen. Talk to someone who appears to have the solutions for everybody else, but they don't have no solutions for their problems. Mm. Yes, we live in a, a world where people have sight vision, but they lack a vision of real purpose. But on this morning, I, I want to I wanna, I wanna reach out, I want to talk to, I want to preach to some visionaries that I believe I have in the building. I want to preach to uh, those that have come to the realization uh, uh, that God's vision means God's process. And in that when God 
has us in a point where he is connecting our vision uh, uh, to us and with us. Uh, at times, he has to stretch us. At times, he has to make us uncomfortable. He has to do this. He has to, he has to sometimes allow pain in our lives in order for us to receive and to appreciate the future plans and the future promotions, the, the, the future uh, 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 evaluations and elevations that he has for our life. Sometimes the, the vision uh, gives pain in the process. As we look at the scripture on today, book of Rebecca. Uh, just to give you a little uh, biblical background and, and framework, uh, because there was so much evil and injustice uh, within the nation of Judah, and fear that God had abandoned the nation forever, the prophet Habakkuk, he, he begins crying out to God in prayer, and, and he begins asking God, would he come in some way and speak to the people? Uh, Rebecca continued to petition God at and ask God, would he come and bring about healing? And, and would, he, would, would he revive their souls and, and bring them back to himself? The prophet had been praying for a long time. How many of you have had to pray for a long time? Amen. There's some stuff on your heart. Amen. And, and, and you get on your knees and, and you begin to ask God and you begin to pray and you look up and, and one hour has passed. I mean, I know some of y'all don't, y'all don't pray past the hour anymore. I know, I know y'all give God a good 30 seconds. Amen. I, I know you give God maybe three or four minutes, but however, how many of you have ever prayed for over an hour? Amen. And you, you got on your knees and you started praying and time passed. And when you looked up, amen, time had, had got away from you. That's where Rebecca where we find him. He had been praying for a long time, but God gave Habakkuk the silent treat. God did not answer Habakkuk. He kept praying. God did not answer. He kept praying. God would not answer. And I don't know about you when I, I ask a person a question. And then when they ignore me, amen, I get upset, amen. I, I don't, you know, maybe, maybe y'all, you know, but I don't care if it's my kids or my wife. I mean, ain't nobody in the house got hard of hearing, amen. Nobody, you know, has, has, has you know, a difficult where they can't hear. And so when you know somebody hears you and you, you ask them a question and they don't respond, don't it get just a little bit irritating, amen? Because the next thing that comes to your mind, I know you heard me, and if you're not answering me, that means you're ignoring me. Oh, come on, some of you, I got to talk to me on this morning. That, that means that, that you hear my voice, but my voice don't mean enough to you for you to respond back. And so, so since you're not responding, I got a problem. So that's where we find Habakkuk. God is not answering Habakkuk. So Rebekah begins to complain. Man, this is not his first complaint. You find his first complaint in Rebekah, the first chapter, the second through the fourth verse. And this is what he, he says to the Lord. He says, how long? Amen. And I, and I want to I wanna let somebody know that when you ask how long, amen, that means that it's already been long enough. Amen. <laughs> when you when you when you when you begin to ask that question, it means that you already uh, yo you, you already at the point where you're saying, okay, I'm past I'm past waiting. He said, how long, oh Lord, must I call for help? But you will not listen. Violence is everywhere, and when I begin to read like read this, I say, oh, this this doesn't sound like 2020. Violence is everywhere. I cry out, but you do not save me. Must I forever see these evil deeds? Why must I watch all this misery? Whenever I look, I see destruction. I, I see the violence. I am surrounded by people who love to argue and fight. Lord, have mercy. Mm. Let, me, let me preach on this morning. The law has become paralyzed and there is no justice in the court. I, I, I'm telling you, amen, it sounds like 2020. The wicked far outnumber the righteous so that just has become perverted. To summarize this passage with two questions, Rebecca was asking, God, where are you? And God, why are you allowing this to happen? 
Fast forward to chapter 2. God still has not responded. Not only is Habakkuk tired of living in a, a violent and immoral uh, and idolatrous society, but he's now also tired of God not answering him. So the prophet gets more demanding. So in verse 2 in, in Habakkuk, the second chapter in verse 1, he says, God, since you will not answer me, I'm going to do what I need to do for the people. Now I will become the watchman over the people. And see, sometimes when God doesn't move like we want God to, to move, we say, well, God, you know what? I'm going to take matters in my own hands. Amen. And God, you, you're not fixing it, so God, let me go and get some Gorilla Glue and let me fix it myself. Come on, somebody. God, you're not working the relationship out like I think you should work the relationship out, Lord. So I'm going to stop fooling with this one, and I'm going to start talking to this one. Amen. Because this one over here is looking mighty good, and, and this one over here is a, it's complicated. So God, if you ain't fixing it when I think you should, Lord, I'm going to fix it myself. He said, I'm going to become the watchman. And, and you have to understand this was a meaningful role because not everybody can be a watchman. You see, y'all people that like to sleep all day, y'all disqualified. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all people that every time your phone ding, you got to pick it up, you'd be disqualified because you easily distracted. Everybody can't be a watchman. Amen. The watchman's job was very critical because they were the ones that were to alert the people uh, of imminent danger. They had to be focused, amen. They had to make sure that, that they knew what was going on because if they failed to warn the people about the enemy, amen, and the people were massacred, the blood of the people would be on their hands. So while he was watching and while he was waiting in frustration and in anguish, God finally, somebody say finally, God finally gave him an answer. And this is what God tells him. He says, I need you to write the vision and to make it plain upon tables. Praise the Lord. He said, I, I need you to understand on this morning that the first part of accomplishing any vision is to take it from the spiritual realm and then bring it to the natural realm. And, and this can only be accomplished, amen, by writing the vision down or writing what God has given you. He tells Habakkuk, the vision that I've given you, I need you to publish the vision. Many of you know you've been in school, you can read all you want to read, and, 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 and granted, you can gain a whole lot of knowledge from reading. But boy, when you write down what you read, mm, when you take some notes about what you read, amen, when you do a summary about what you read, amen, I found out for me, amen, I'm able to retain it a, a whole lot more. I, I don't mind people talking and amen, I don't mind reading stuff, but every now and then I have to pick up a pen and I, I have to pick up a paper, especially when God is talking to me and I have to write it down, amen, because it's important. What are you writing, preacher? What are you writing, Habakkuk? What are you writing, pastor? He, he's writing what God has revealed to him. He doesn't stop there. He is to write the purpose for the vision. Why is, is God telling me what he's telling me? What am I supposed to do? Where am I going? How am I going to get there? This is very important on this morning because you must understand that sometimes God will give you a vision, but he might not reveal the process or the pain that is required for you to fulfill the vision. Ah, a lot of us in here right now, we have vision. And we got excited when God spoke to our heart, amen. But when the, when the pain started showing up, when the stretching started to show up, when the uncomfortability started to show up, we wanted to retreat back and say, God, are you sure you said what you said? When you find yourself in that predicament, you can end up asking the same questions that Rebecca asked. God, where are you? And why are you allowing this to happen to me? 
When you write down the vision, what it allows you to do is to revisit the promise that God placed in your spirit. Oh, this is so important. Because when those seeds of discouragement, uh, amen, begin to, to, to come into your life, and when you feel like the process is taking longer than you think it should take, when pain shows up, amen, it, it's nothing like going and getting your prayer journal out, praise the Lord. And you motivate yourself with your own writings. I mean, the pages that you wrote on, amen. You know, God was talking to you and you were getting divine revelation. How many of y'all got a prayer journal, amen? If you don't have one, you need to get you one, amen? Because everything that God is telling you, you just can't consume it and take it in and, and remember it. Sometimes you have to write it down, amen, so you can go back and look at uh, uh, 2019 and, and you say, Lord, in 2019, I remember that I was sick, Lord, and you promised me as I was praying to you and you promised me as I was laying on the bed and as I was crying out that you were going to heal me and Lord now in 2020 Lord I'm walking in perfect health Lord I'm, I'm able to do what you called me to do sometimes you have to go back and look at what you wrote and how God bless you have to motivate yourself you have to look at your pages and see how you signed it. You know, we sign letters, you know, sincerely and best regards. But I don't know about you when I'm signing my, my prayer journal. At the end of whatever I write, I put amen. Praise the Lord. When I'm signing my prayer journal, at the end of it, I put and it is so. When I'm signing my prayer journal, at the end of whatever I'm writing, I put in the name of Jesus. It's just me on this morning. You have to encourage yourself, amen, so you can be able to press on. I love how Paul puts it in Philippians, the third chapter, in the, the 12th verse. He says, I haven't obtained everything that I, 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 my heart's desire. I haven't received everything that God has for me. Sure enough, I'm not perfect, but in the process, I am going to continue to press. Pressing past what people think pressing past how I feel, pressing past what things look like. So when you know that it is a God-given vision, since he is the one that gave it to you, you know that he will make the, necessita the, the necessary adjustments in your life for you to receive the open doors, for you to receive his provision. I tell everybody, I, you know, I know God speaks to us and he tells us uh, uh, things and God reveals things to us. And I've been there myself. God said, you're going to be a business owner. Amen. And I didn't have two quarters to rub together. Amen. I was working for somebody. I was working three jobs. And when God told me that, I sat back and I said, oh, God, don't insult my intelligence. Come on, somebody. I know y'all, I know y'all have arrived. Amen. And, and I know, but I remember God, I asked God 10 or 15 years before then, I said, Lord, I want to own my own business. So 15 later, when God said, we're about to open doors and we're about to manifest something in your life, I thought it was a joke. Why? Because I began to look at my circumstances, amen. I began to look at what I didn't have, amen. I began to focus in on the connections I didn't make. And I said, God, you, how you going to do this? Mm -hmm. How are you going to do it? But what I found out, <laughs> that when God gives you vision, he gives you provision. And what I've learned is, is that favor, amen. <laughs> Woo, favor, you can't put a price tag on favor, amen. I, I'll tell you what, I, and I told this story, we walked in a bank, <laughs> amen, didn't have no money, amen. A bank that wasn't in the city of Topeka, and we walked in a bank in Lawrence and sat down, had a half-drawn business plan, amen. When I go back and look at it now, I would have threw it in the trash or put it in the shredder. Come on, somebody. Only thing that we had right on the paper was our last names and our first names. All the numbers, I got to add them up. I said, man, this don't even come out like it should come out. But we sat down with somebody, and I'm going to tell you how God works. It's a person that was in Lawrence that was the, that, that was the bank uh, uh, that was in charge of, of uh, commercial loans. That He was the man. He was a black man. I had never seen him in my life. And, and come to find out that his family lived in Topeka, praise the Lord, and he had been coming to the services 
that, that, that with the funeral home we worked at and he had seen what we could do and when we sat down and we gave him the paper, he looked at it. You know what he said? He said, I don't need this. He said, I don't need this. I said, what do you mean you don't need this? He said, I, he said, I, I, I knew y'all was coming. He saved, amen. He saved. He said, I knew y'all was coming, amen. And my partner well, ain't fully delivered, amen. He's still working on it. Y'all pray for him. But I tell you what, that day his faith jumped up. I tell you that day he got in the car and he said, thank you, Jesus. I was looking at him. I said, wait a minute, man. I'm the preacher. I'm the one that's supposed to be shouting, amen. Don't tell me what God can't do. But I want you to notice, he said, write the vision down. We wrote down the business plan. He said, write it down, and I believe that God was being very specific because, amen, just like your social media page, amen, amen, you can't tell everybody everything. And some people can't handle everything. Some of the pain we are in right now, amen, it's not because we can't keep other people's secret. It's because we keep putting our business out. Everybody don't need to know what you're going through. They don't need to know all the details in your life. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. If you're in a new relationship right now, that's wonderful. God bless you. Amen. But that don't mean start posting wedding dates. Amen. Because you don't know if the relationship is going to last. Come on, somebody. You don't know if it's going to work out. Amen. And I promise you, if God can get the good news, it's going to be one person that gets in your DM. If y'all don't know what that is, that's y'all direct messages on the time that you was opposed to have the wedding. And they're going to ask you the question, where is your wedding, preachers? Y'all, come on, somebody. In order for you not to experience more in self-inflicted pain in the process, there are times when God speaks to you and places a vision in your spirit, and that vision is only for you to meditate and to pray on it. Because everybody can't celebrate or everybody don't appreciate what God is about to do in your life, especially those that feel that they deserve it more than you. Hmm. Preach Joseph. Ah, he was having dreams and having visions, amen. Hallelujah, and, 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 and he was having some good ones, and he took it upon himself to tell his brothers that, that hey, y'all, y'all know what? My dreams and my visions tells me that y'all going to be serving me, y'all going to be bowing down to me, and y'all know that his brothers got mad. had the bright idea to tell his dream and his vision. And guess where Joseph ended up? In the pit. If, if it's a God's given vision, Psalms 37 and 23, that means God is ordering your steps. That means step by step. Moment by moment. Hour by hour. Everything that you do, everywhere that you go, you're allowing God to order your steps. And when you're walking and operating in a vision birthed by God, Proverbs 3 and 6 says that he will direct your path. Verse 3 says, for the vision is yet for a point in time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come. Amen. Have you noticed that people have their patience. Amen. They, 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 they lost their patience, but I, I want to I wanna put a spin on it. People will wait for what they want to. Amen. We'll go to an amusement park. Amen. We'll stand in the line for two and a half hours for a four-minute ride. Mm. Amen. We'll sit in the doctor's office all day long to see the doctor for 15 minutes. Amen. We'll sit in the hairdresser for three hours. Two days later, you look like you need to go back.
He know he's a barber. He know what I'm talking about. Got some people they got to come every week. Amen. That line, that hairline. Hey, let me leave this alone. Praise the Lord. But we have patience for our kids and our spouses. Patience at our jobs and patience even for our haters. And, but when it comes to God, we expect instant answers to our prayers. We expect instant salvation for our loved ones. We expect instant healing of our illnesses. We expect instant relief from our trials and, and tribulations. So we'll wait on everything else, but when it comes to God, we don't want to wait. Even when the situation that we're going to drives us to God, we have the nerve to say, Lord, if you don't give me patience right now, patience right now, I'm about to lose it. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. This is the reason why some of us are still in our personal wilderness. What should have happened days ago, weeks ago, months ago, it still hasn't manifested in our life. Yeah, you know, uh, God has promised you the promised land, but you know you have something to do with how long it takes till you get there. Mm -hmm -hmm. See, a lot of people, amen, they, they, they have said yes, and they have conceived the vision from God but they are not able to carry it full term because they're not willing to wait. You receive the vision, but you're not, a, you're not able to see the vision be manifested because you want the vision yesterday. You want the results last week. God said, I'm going to bless you with a house. Amen. And you don't understand that you in an apartment and your credit ain't right yet. God got to, God got to do some things, amen. <laughs> you got to do some things, amen. Hey, amen. But God said, I'm going I'm to bless you with a house. And, and instead of you understanding that God is a process that, that I got to stop putting stuff on my credit card. And, amen. God, I got to start saving stuff. Lord, I got to, I got to, you know what I'm saying? I got to get on a budget, Lord. And Lord, I, I need you to send people in my life that have expertise that can help me and that can guide me. But we want to keep doing what we want to do, when we want to do it, how we want to do it, and expect God to show up when we want him to show up. I have some ladies in here. You can, you can attest to the fact, amen, man, this is not for you, amen. If you, at if you attempt to speed up the, the birthing process before the baby is ready to be delivered, you are prone to complications. Mm. We rush ahead of God prematurely, and, and, and we are the ones that make the vision complicated. It's not God. He says, though the vision tarries, wait on it. He said, but it's coming. It's on its way. It's on its way. Patience conveys the idea of someone who is tremendously strong and able to withstand all adversity. Even when vision gives a pain, gives pain a purpose. Isaiah 40 and 31, it says, but they that wait on the Lord. Mm. How many of y'all know that scripture? Woo, I bet, you know, I, you know, sometimes I just pull this scripture out. Amen. How many of y'all got some go-to scriptures? You know what I'm saying? You just got them go-to scriptures. Amen. Them ones you memorize. Amen. When you praying for folk. Amen. They just bubble up in your spirit. Amen. This is one of my go-to scriptures. Amen. Because, you know, sometimes I, as a pastor, I want the church to be packed last year. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And you know what I'm saying? And it ain't. I, people all say, oh, Pastor, you want? It ain't all about the numbers. I just know the more people that we have in the church, the more things that we can do, the more people that we can be a blessing to, the more people that we can reach out. So it ain't about numerical of people sitting in the seats. It's about, Lord, the more people that you give us, God, the more that the vision can be executed and we can do what you called us to do, Lord. I know you can do a lot with a few, Lord, but I know, Lord, if we had more people in here that were motivated, Lord, to latch on to what you have called us to do, God, we could go out and take this city by storm. 
And so sometimes I sit and I, I say, Lord, send the men. And you know what the Lord tell me a lot of times? Are you ready for me to send the men? Are you equipped for when the people come in to be able to teach and to preach and to do what they need you to do so they can be qualified to go out? Then he reminds me of my scripture. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Mm, they shall mount up on wings as eagles. They should run and not be weary. Oh, man, I get tired of running sometimes. I'm talking about it spiritually. You know what I'm saying? Do you get tired sometimes? But he said you'll run and not get weary. You should walk and not faint. But the key word is they that wait. Oh, Lord, am I willing to wait on you? And, Lord, I know it's taking the time for, for my children to come in, but, Lord, I'm going to continue to wait on you, Lord, because I know what you promised me. You said if I raised up the child in the way that they should go, that they would not depart from God, they act in a stone-cold fool, Lord. But I am going to wait on you because I know your word is, is right, Lord. I'm going to wait on, on the promotion, Lord, because I know that you placed me here. God, I know you put me here for a reason. It wasn't by accident. Lord, I know that you had me in mind, and, Lord, I see everybody else getting promoted. Promoted. Lord, I see everybody else are going to the next level. Those that, that wait on the Lord. Lord, you willing to wait? Lord, you said you're going to heal me. Mm, mm, mm. Woo. And I opened my medicine cabinet and I got a pharmacy in it. Come on, somebody. Keep taking your medicine, but the Lord said he's going to heal you. Amen. He's going to heal you. Amen. And if he told you he's going to heal you, he's going to heal you, amen. Are you willing to wait, amen? <laughs> Woo. Mm -mm -mm. As I prepare to close, amen. I told you, see, I thought I was going to preach long, amen. But I find out the Lord has given me these words. And uh, he's saying, you, you need to preach and, 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 and put it out there and, and be done, amen. Because I'm finding out, we can preach for, for, for a whole two hours, one hour, and, and people only take about five or ten minutes of what you preached about. Come on, somebody. <laughs> they might remember your subject, amen. Amen. <laughs> and, and we'd have been up all week long, amen, in commentaries and this and that. And, and y'all come back, what did I preach about last Sunday? Oh, my God. Somebody should have took some notes. Wait a minute, what I preach about last Sunday? Uh huh? Uh huh? <laughs> See what I said? Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, so, so the Lord is teaching me to be responsible in that area. Amen. To give the people what they need. Amen. And move forward. When vision gives pain a purpose, what are we to do? We are to revisit our vision statement, what God has told us to write, amen, what we, are, what we were to write out, amen, what he has placed in our, in our hearts, we are to, to write it out, amen, I want you to do this on this year, this is an application process, whatever God has told you, whatever God has birthed in your spirit, amen, if you don't have it on paper, I want you to go home, I don't care, you better get you out your favorite tablet, you go to, go to a family dollar, the way you cheap, amen, and go to Dollar Tree and get you something, amen, it might not be a real prayer journal right on the, on the front of it, in a black magic marker prayer journal, amen, that's between you and God, and you begin to write your vision out what God has spoke to you, put the date down, put the time down, time stamp it, and I guarantee you if you're praying and if you're seeking God, amen, months from now and, and years from now, if you go back and revisit what you wrote down and see if God hasn't brought it to pass. Ah, I challenge you on this one. I know for some of you, it's going to take you out of your, your comfort zone because you want immediate results, but, but I challenge you, if God has said it, you can believe it, write it down. Those that have already uh, uh, kept a prayer journal, just go back and start revisiting months and go back and revisit weeks and, and see if God hasn't showed himself mighty in your situation. He said it's for a point in time, amen, so don't give up. He said if he said it, you can believe it, amen. But it's for an appointed time, and it's a 
appointed time is his time. How many struggle with that? God's timing, not your timing. Your timing is, how many struggle with God's timing? I got my hand up. Hey Amen. Be honest. You want it now. You want results now. Hey Amen. And God says, they that wait. <laughs> Woo, there's a method to his madness. Hey Amen. Because while, he's, while you're waiting, I know what he's doing. I, I figured it out for myself while I'm, while I'm waiting. Boy, he's strengthening me. He's equipping me. Amen. He's, he's, he's getting me out of fear, and he's, he's allowing me to walk into faith. He's removing doubt and worry out of my mind. And while I'm waiting, he's, he's working on you. He's working on me. So why are you waiting? And you don't understand that it's renewing you. So when you receive the, the blessing, oh, man, you can handle it. Uh, I, I wanna, I'm going to preach a message. I don't know when I'm going to preach it, but I'm going to preach a message. Can't you handle the blessing? Because mm. some, some of us can't handle the blessing. What we're asking for, we can't even handle it. We ain't ready for it. If God blessed some of y'all with a new house right now, you wouldn't know what to do with it. Amen. Let me finish. God has an ultimate vision for all of us. We find it in 1 Timothy, the second chapter, third and fourth verse. The, po the Apostle Paul summarizes God's will and, and vision for all humanity. God, our Savior, desires that all men be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's, that's what God's vision is for everyone, that we be saved. You're in this house on this morning, and this message is spoke to you, and you're saying, Pastor, I don't know what to do with my life. I want to let you know this morning it's time to start connecting with God and grabbing hold to his vision instead of yours. Mm. It's time to make Jesus the Lord of your delight. And sometimes we are in disarray because God has given us a vision and he spoke to us. Instead of going along with the vision, we have taken our administrative roles and we have tried to change the vision. We have tried to adjust the vision. We have tried to redefine the vision. And God is saying that until you follow the blueprint, you're never going to be able to build what I've called you to do. He said, so when you put your pencil down, That, that frame of mind that I just don't know what's going on, Lord. I, I don't know what to do with my life. And I don't know what direction my life is, is heading to. I'm just existing. I'm just living. I'm just going to work day in and day out, coming home and paying bills and, and paying more bills. And I'm, I'm planning stuff, but Lord, I'm not being fulfilled in what I'm planning because when I lay down at night, I feel empty. Mm. about grabbing hold to God's vision for your life. And I guarantee you, it might not be without pain, it might not be without transition, it might not be without change, but I tell you what, for the blessings of the Lord, make it rich and add it no song. <laughs> Everything that God does, he does well. Well, didn't say you wasn't going to go through something, but oh man, You're in the house, amen, as our ministers come, amen. Acts, second chapter, 38 through 39th verse. The Apostle Paul outlines the process and the steps to begin fulfilling God's vision for your life. He says, and Peter said to them, repent. Somebody say repent. And let everyone be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Promises to you and your children and all who are before. He simply says, repent. He says, repent. 
You might be in here on today and you say, Pastor, I've repented. I am saved. I've given my heart to Christ. I am doing all that I, I need to do. But Lord, it, it seems like the vision is unclear. It feels like that I am challenged when it comes to operating in the vision that you have for my, my life, the, the vision that you have for my family, the vision that you have man, for my spiritual encounter. I, I want to just ask you the question on today, just this one question that you can ponder. How is your prayer life? I want to let you know that prayer is fundamental both in recognizing what God wants us to do and it, and it acknowledges our total inability to do things without him. How's your prayer life? Are you meditating on the word of God? Because you know what? His word is where he speaks through us. His word is where he speaks to us through the Holy Spirit and giving interpretation. And how, how, how is it when it comes to you meditating on his word? Psalms 119 and 105 says the word of God, it illuminates us. It becomes your lamp. It becomes your light into your pathway. To give you understanding and to give you guidance. People are con more concerned about this virus than they are about their soul. Ah. Yeah. The virus might, yes, true enough, it might cause you some physical infirmities. It might even take you out. But I tell you what, man, I feel a whole lot better knowing that I got Jesus on my side. I go as far as to be able to walk around and say, in the name of Jesus, amen, I won't succumb to, to what's going around. The Lord, you're going to encamp your angels around me. You're going to protect me, God. You're going to keep me. Uh, you know, that's just the kind of faith that I have. But oh, if people would pick up a Bible quicker than they pick up a mass. People would get on their knees quicker than they get some some sanitizer. Oh man, what shape would we be in? We've been to pray this virus out of out of the whole world. You got to make a connection. Write the vision. Make it plain. Hallelujah, glory to God. Take 